Logic Pro is missing a key feature that could really take the Hollywood orchestrator to the next level. Hey everyone, my name is Robert Rodriguez and I'm a media composer. If you're new here, I wanna invite you to like this video and subscribe to the channel. My goal is to make the music writing process as easy as possible for any new composer. So if you saw my last video, I played around with the East West Hollywood Orchestrator for the first time. And if you haven't heard, East West Sounds just released a new product called the Hollywood Orchestra Opus Edition. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. Since making that video, the number one question I've gotten was, how do you use the MIDI export feature? So first, let me just explain what that actually is. So as you can see, I actually loaded up the Opus engine. The thing is, if you were to just press record, all of the MIDI data would just play back what you actually played. So if you were to have string ostinatos, and that's not actually gonna show up in the MIDI region, it's just gonna show you the chords that you played. A MIDI export feature would actually be very beneficial because then you could record the MIDI data coming from the Opus engine or the Opus output. And in the last video, one of the things that I talked about was not being able to use other libraries with the orchestrator because it's an East-West product. But if you were able to get the MIDI data onto a MIDI region, you could assign that to any library that you wanted. So coming back to the question, how do you use this feature, especially in Logic? The short answer is you can't yet. So I reached out to the East-West support team and they explained that in order to export the MIDI data from the orchestrator, your DAW needs to have the ability to create a MIDI track that can record the MIDI input from a plugin's output. So like the Opus engine. They did say that they're in conversations with developers that don't have that option. So that kind of gives me hope that someday down the line, Logic will offer a record enabled MIDI track or some kind of alternative. I also want to point out that they didn't specify which developers they were in communication with, and they didn't give a specific list of which DAWs could or couldn't use the MIDI export feature. I do know that you can record MIDI tracks in Cubase, for example, and I've left a link in the description to a really helpful video that can help you do this. And if you are in Logic, I've seen a few videos that kind of come close to what we're looking for, where you would go to MIDI effects and you could add the arpeggiator, chord trigger, whatever, and capture the MIDI data there. This doesn't actually help us when we want to record the MIDI data coming from the Opus engine or an instrument itself. So Logic basically offers four main tracks. You have instrument tracks, audio tracks, auxiliary tracks, and external MIDI tracks. So the thing about an instrument track is that we can set the output to a bus or wherever, but the input has to be some kind of instrument. We can capture what we play, but we can't really get individual data like what the woodwinds are doing or percussion or brass or strings. We could create an external MIDI track. The thing about this track is that it's really just an extension. You can't record, you can't really do much with an external MIDI, so that doesn't really help us. You could try creating an aux track, and this is probably the closest that we can get to to a record-enabled MIDI track because in the instrument itself, we can set the output to one and two, three and four, five and six, on and on and on, and we can route that to the aux's input. The downside is that it doesn't have any way to record. There's no way to record onto an aux track. So I really wanted to find some sort of workaround for now that could help you separate out woodwinds and the brass and percussion and strings onto their own tracks. So right now, this one track has recorded these chords and a little melodic line and it's playing through all of the ensemble in the orchestrator. This is great, but it's not very helpful when we wanna separate the instruments. So for now, let's mute it and move on. So what I did was I created a, another instrument, and like I said, you could route these outputs to one and two, three and four, five and six, on and on and on, up until 31, 32. So that is essentially 16 different outputs. But of course, there's yet another problem where if you were to create a new software instrument, go to Opus, and we were to go to multi-output, you can create up to nine stereo outputs, which is fine, but it doesn't give you that full 16. So you're not gonna be able to route 
all 16 of the instruments that are in the Opus engine in a single instance. I just wanna pause right here to say that since recording this video, the Opus engine does allow up to 16 stereo outputs rather than just the nine. It's unclear if this is specific to the Diamond Edition or an overall Opus update. My assumption is that this is a new update that has been rolled out recently because the Opus manual mentions only nine stereo outputs. Throughout the rest of the video, I might mention the limitations of just the nine stereo outputs, but it's good to know that it does support up to 16. The only difference now is that what I do for two instances of the Opus engine can now be achieved in just one. Okay, so back to the video. This was our original single track. I created one track that is basically woodwinds, brass, and percussion, and I separated out all of the instruments themselves. And then I created another instance, and this is just the strings. There's probably another way of doing this, but this was just one way. That way, if I were to open up the instrument, the contrabassoon in the woodwinds goes to output one and two, uh, the French horns go to three and four, the trombones go to five and six, low brass seven and eight, timpani nine and 10, bass drum 11 and 12, toms 13 and 14. So that gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I copied this exact instance and created another track where I basically turned off all of the ensemble other than the strings. And now in a whole other instance, the violins go to output one and two, the second violins go to three and four, the violas go to five and six, um, the celli go to seven and eight, and the basses go to nine and 10. So now I have the full preset just separated out into two instances. Then I was able to separate the instances by the instrument. So let's take a listen to what was written. Another problem is that the MIDI channels do not work the way that they should. So when everything is unmuted and you just press play, everything is gonna play. Even if there's no MIDI region in the French horns track, in the trombones track, um, in the celli track, everything is still gonna play. If we were to solo a single track, then it takes the, this was the contrabassoon, or let's say the violins. So what we have to do now is copy this MIDI region onto every single track. It's all the same information, nothing has changed. It's the chord and a little melodic line. So now this should actually give us information that we want to hear from each individual track. As you heard, I was able to mute different tracks and that gave me a bit more control over each individual instrument. But now we come into the problem of these MIDI regions all have the same exact information. So we don't actually get a contra bassoon marcato there, a timpani long here, or the bass drum, or a uh, violin two spiccatos. That's probably something we have to edit beforehand in the Opus engine itself. So how can we work around that? I'm gonna focus on this second instance of the Opus engine, mainly because the strings have less instruments to work with right here in this example. I'm gonna create five audio tracks and I'm gonna make their input bus one to bus five. And what I'll do up here is take these five instrument and aux tracks I'll make the output bus one to bus five. So the output of these tracks are routing from these buses 
to the input of these audio tracks, and then they come out of our stereo output, so monitors or headphones or wherever. So we're going to try recording each track to its own audio track and then converting that audio track back to MIDI data. And that is how we can try getting individual MIDI data onto each track so that we're not using the same exact information. So let us press record and let's see it print. Perfect, so now we can actually see in the audio waves the individual articulations that each instrument is doing. So these are longs, these are staccato or spiccato, spiccato, marcato, and then Bartok pits, so it's a little bit shorter. Let's try the basses first. This might be the easiest. Go to the editor. We're going to flex then we're going to flex pitch and this feature is really meant for pitch correction but it gives us the option if we were to go to edit create mini track from flex pitch data and that brings us back to a midi track with actual midi information so for some reason it brings it all the way down the velocity all the way down we are going to raise that So it's just around the same velocity. So we'll just leave that there. And then we can go up to the Celli and we'll do the same exact thing. Flex pitch. So what I ended up doing was taking each audio track, converting it to a MIDI track, and I basically had to assign everything a long or short articulation. Basically, here's the final product. Here's everything together. It doesn't match exactly what we had before, but the MIDI data is there, so we can always adjust modulation, expression, volume, anything like that. And of course, you would do the exact same process with pretty much everything. This was just the strings, and that was an entire process. It's a way of doing this. Honestly, this is not an option I would necessarily suggest because especially when it came down to the um, the short notes, I was in there really digging through and trying to correct and do all of this stuff that you probably could have figured out without the orchestrator. This is definitely not the most efficient or effective way of doing this, but if you're dead set on having this MIDI export feature be an option for you, then this could be a possibility. I don't necessarily agree with it, but it it's a workaround. Another thing is that it just takes up a lot of your time and your resources because now you're creating a bunch of Opus Engine instances across all of these instrument tracks. I honestly think one option is to just 
adjust everything in this one instance of Opus, because they have the MIDI editor in here, you can adjust which patch you want on the side. This honestly can act as your MIDI region. And the reason why this just works is because we already saw that these tracks, this instrument and aux tracks, they can be muted or soloed however you want. You can add reverb and effects to them however you want. You're really just not editing the MIDI data the way we usually would, right? Because everything is just the same but you can adjust that in here. So the flex pitch is one option. You could just cut it off at this individual output option. In the end, there's no perfect way to do this. And what it comes down to is Logic needs to release an update where you are able to create a MIDI track and have it be record enabled so that you can just capture the MIDI coming from Opus and you don't need to go through all of this. You just can capture the MIDI and it's there for you. And the hidden gem of that is to then give the MIDI data to maybe other East-West instruments. Maybe you wanna use Spitfire audio instruments. Maybe you wanna use CineSample instruments. The point is you have the MIDI data. And right now, Logic is just not giving us that option. If anyone has any more information on how you could do this in Logic that isn't necessarily tracking the MIDI effects, then please let me know in the comments down below. Maybe the solution is out there and I just haven't figured it out yet. So if you did get some value today, then definitely consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. And if you miss my Hollywood Orchestrator playthrough, then definitely check that out. I'll leave a link for that in the description down below as well. Hopefully sometime soon, we can figure out a faster and more efficient way of doing this. But for now, thank you for stopping by and happy composing.